out there in video land, you'll be wanting to see and hear another adventure in the life and times of the world's favorite mathematician, Dirk Niblick of the Math Brigade, won't you? What do you mean, no? You're going to hear the story, round, round world of rounding, whether you like it or not. Let's check in on Dirk right now as he writes checks to pay his monthly bills. Well, my gas and electric bill seems a bit high this month. I have used very little electricity, and I haven't had gas for days. Oh, well. As Dirk continued to write checks, he was interrupted by a knocking on his door. Who could that be? Who could that be? It's us. It's them. Well, there's one sure way to find out. I'll open the door. Well, if it isn't the Noodleman, come to pay a call. If it isn't the Noodleman's come to pay a call, we're in the wrong cartoon. To what do I owe this occasion? Well, Lieutenant, it's the end of the month. Yes? And, well... What is it? You owe us some money for doing chores for you. Oh, that's right. I certainly do. Now, let me check. Did you uh, mow the lawn? Yep. Wash the dishes? Uh-huh. Put the cat out? I didn't know he was on fire. Paint the house? Sure did. Reshingle the roof? Clear the forest, build the hydroelectric dam, landscape the North 40. Check, 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 and check. All right, then. Here's the $3 I owe you for your work. Thanks, Lieutenant Niblick. We can use the bread. We're going to a birthday party. It costs $3 to go to a birthday party? No, sir. We're going to buy presents with it. We're going to the Quaid Quadruplets party. Quadruplets? So you'll have to buy four presents, right? That's right. And uh, we're a little late, folks, so... Thanks for the money, Lieutenant. See you later. I once knew some quadruplets who were golfers. All they did was yell, four... <coughs> Hello, Dirk Neblick of the Bath Brigade speaking, and rather well, too, if I may say. <coughs> well, it's the mother of me. Hello there, Mommy dearest. I see you got my new unlisted number. Uh, well, what's on your sweet mind, Mater? <laughs> yes, 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 you want me to go grocery shopping for you. Well, I'd be happy as a clam to do it. Uh, what items do you need? As Dirk's mother dictated her grocery list to her willing son, Fluff and Fold Noodlemen were just entering a large store to make their purchases. Okay, Fluff, we know what we're getting them, right? Uh-huh. We'll get Willie Quaid a toy airplane. And we'll get Wally Quaid a toy submarine. We'll get Millie Quaid a toy car and Molly Quaid a toy truck. Remember, folks, we've only got three dollars, so that's our absolute limit. I know. Oh, here's a plane, 78 cents. I'll just round that off to the nearest dime, 80 cents. Here's a toy car for 74 cents. I'll round that down to 70 cents. Here's the submarine. 79 cents. I'll round that up to 80 cents. And here's the toy truck. 73 cents, okay. I'll round that down to 70 cents. Now, how much do your presents cost, folks? Roughly 70 plus 70 cents, $1.40. Okay, mine costs roughly 80 plus 80 cents, $1.60. A dollar 40 plus a dollar 60 is $3. We've got just enough. Let's go to the checkout counter and get to the party before the ice cream melts. But do they have enough money? They rounded the numbers off, which is a good idea to give you an approximate cost. But what's wrong with this picture? Puzzle it out. Use your noodle. Think for gosh sakes. Okay, okay, okay. Wait a second, you're gonna let me make up a mathematics problem and you're telling me that the answer will be three. How do you know if I'm going to make it up that the answer is always three? Trust you. Okay. Okay. Two. Write down a number. Okay. Add five to it. Okay. Now double that. Double that. <laughs> it's gonna be three. I don't know about this. Okay, it's doubled. Subtract four. Mm-hmm. Wait, I'm not so good at subtraction. Mm -hmm. Okay, now what? Divide by two. Okay. Huh? 
now subtract the first number I wrote down. Okay, and you're saying that the answer is three. It is three. That is amazing. Hello? Hello? She hung up on me. I'm going to have to try this again. I'm going to use a different number. Okay, I'll just seven. Seven, and then it was plus five, I think. Yeah. Okay, then I double that. Four. I don't know. Then it was minus four. Mm -hmm. 20. Then I divide by two. And then I... Oh, yeah. Then I subtract the first number I wrote down. And the answer is three. How about that? Boy, I'm going to have to tell the Queen of England next time she calls. Just pick a number, add five, double that, subtract four, divide by two, and then subtract the first number I wrote down. Boy, oh boy, oh boy, what do you know? And then the answer is always three. Hmm. Um. Oh, hello. Hi, Ernest. Yeah, Pub died. Yeah, I know that Pat. <laughs> what are you going to do? You know, I'm glad you called. I, you got a pencil? Okay, now write down a number. Yeah, any number. Yeah, now add five to it. Good, now. Well, did you find out what was wrong with this picture? I'm afraid I didn't. But that's what happens when you grow up living in a service station grease pit as I did. Let's see how Fluff and Fold are doing. Uh, is this going to be cash or charge? Cash, please. Very well. 78 cents plus 79 cents plus 74 cents plus 73 cents comes to a grand total of three dollars and four cents. Three dollars and four cents? Question mark, exclamation point, question mark, exclamation point. That's right, three dollars and four cents, period. We haven't got three dollars and four cents. Tough noogies. Cough up the four cents or I'll call a policeman and have you thrown in prison for the rest of your natural life. But, but... What seems to be the trouble here? Gee, a talking grocery cart. It's Lieutenant Niblick. Well, yes, it is. Have some trouble? No, thanks. Just had some. We bought these birthday presents, Lieutenant, and we thought we had enough money. But we're short. What can we do? About being short? Well, learn to catch the ball in a crowd and follow your blockers until you see a crack in the defense and then run to daylight. Uh, 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 how did this happen, kids? Well, we shopped and I rounded the prices off to the nearest dime. So did I. Did you round up or down? Up. Down. Well, there's your problem, kids. Lots of times it's okay to round down, but if you have a limited amount of money to spend, always round the prices up. That way, you'll be safe. Let's see what happened. Fluff, you rounded 78 cents up to 80 cents, and 79 cents up to 80 cents, right? Right. So I added three cents. Correct. But when you rounded down fold, you made the 74 cents 70, and the 73 cents 70, and you were 7 cents too low. Fluff was 3 cents too high, I was 7 cents too low. Together, we're 4 cents too low. Here's the price, three dollars and four cents. Get the money up. I'll loan you the four cents, kids. Here you are, sir. Why, thank you. It's a pleasure doing business with an outstanding mathematician such as yourself. Thanks, Lieutenant Niblick. Now we'll be on our way to the birthday party. Wish the Quaid quadruplets a happy birthday for me. Okay. okay. Happy, happy birthday, birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday. birthday, happy birthday. birthday. I took the liberty of adding up your groceries while Fluff and Fold were doing that mildly amusing exit line. It comes to $20.54. Certainly, $20.54. Oops! I hate to hear oops from doctors, dentists, and customers. What exactly do you mean, oops? Well, I seem to have only $20.50. Gee, if you only hadn't been such a nice guy and loaned the four cents to those two kids, Yes, I wonder if you might also be a nice guy. And... Hey, no way, Jose. Come up with the four cents or I'll call a policeman and have you. And as everybody's favorite numbers cruncher pleaded his case with the merchant, we bid them a fond adieu. Uh, Mr. And... Announcer, I wonder if I might borrow four pennies from you? Neither a borrower nor a lender be.
Welcome to Piece of the Pie, the game show where the answers to the questions come from you, kids at schools all over the country. Hi, everybody. I'm Reggie Cathy. And now, without further ado, let's meet the host of our show, Mr. Chris Franco. <laughs> Thank you, Reggie. Thank you, everybody, for joining us today. We have some fabulous, very formidable competitors with us today. Let's introduce them right away. On the red team, we have Andrew Rickey, Susie Kong, and their team captain, Scott Scher. Let's have a round of applause for the red team. Best of luck to you, red team. Good luck. And they'll be playing against the blue team. And that is Elise Lipnick, Michael Sorensen, and their team captain, Chris Neal. The blue team. Let's have a round of applause. Chris Scott, join me down here, team captain. And let's hear the first survey question from Reg Cathy. Reg. Gladly, Chris. We ask kids at Orofino Elementary School in Orofino, Idaho, to complete this sentence. My parents often say, don't forget to... They gave us eight different answers. See if you can pick their top five answers on today's piece of the pie. Okay, you kids at home have heard today's survey question. Team captains, get your hands over the buzzers because now you're going to hear today's survey question. Your parents always say, don't forget to... Clean your room. Scott, clean your room. That's good for 19 points for the red team. And we go over to Chris on the blue team. Do your chores. Do your chores. I'm sorry, that was probably included on clean your room. But let's have a seat and let's go with the red team. They have the bigger piece of the pie. Let's go to Susie Kong. Hi, Susie. Hi. Your parents always say, don't forget to what, Susie? Take a bath. Take a bath. I'm sorry, that, that's a good answer, and that's something that's a good thing to do, but not one of the top five answers. We move over here to the blue team, to Michael Sorensen. Hi, Mike. Hello. Do your parents tell you to do things around the house, to do things mm. in your life? What do you think the kids might have said was one of the top, their top five answers? To brush your teeth. Don't forget to brush your teeth. That is good. That is the most popular answer. 25 percentage points go to the blue team. That was the most popular answer, and we move over here to Andrew Rickey. Hi, Andrew. Hi. Okay. You heard the question. What do you say, Andrew? Um, I say take out the garbage. Take out the garbage. Well, that's certainly a good thing to do, but it wasn't one of our answers here. We go to the blue team once again, Elise Lipnick. Hi, Elise. Hi. You heard the question? Mm hmm What do you say? Brush your hair. Brush your hair? Ah. Uh. Ooh, I'm sorry. Well, these are good things to do, definitely, but they're not the ones we're looking for. We go back to Scott, the team captain. You've got 19 points, Scott. What do you say? A huddle. A huddle. We go to Scott Sure. What do you say? Scott? Walk the dog. Walk the dog. That's good. For 20 points, they said care for your pets, which means that the red team now has 39 <laughs> points on the pie. Remember, you need 50% or more to win the game. It's getting close. We go over here to Chris Neal. You have two eyes in your name, don't you? Mm -hmm. I have two eyes, too. <laughs> okay, let's continue with the question. Well, your parents always say, don't forget to what, Chris? Wash the dishes. Wash the dishes? Uh, oh, I'm sorry, Chris. We go back to the red team. Susie, what do you say? Quickly. Uh, oh, this is a tough question, apparently. Okay, that little bell means that this is the final round, players. This will be the last time for you to score one question to each team. And we go back to the blue team. We're here with Michael Sorensen. Mike, your answer. To dress nice. Don't forget to dress nice. Uh, I'm sorry, that was not an answer that was given. And the red team, one more answer, red team, from Andrew. Um, do your homework. Do your homework. That's good for 23 points. Which means that the red team gets more than half of the pie. They get 62% and they win the game. Congratulations, red team. The last remaining answer was worth 13 points. That was turn off the lights. But you win a chance to play the lightning round. Susie, come up here. Join me. Andrew, go to our soundproof booth. You get to play the lightning round for an additional prize. Are you ready, Susie? Okay. We're going to ask you three survey questions. You're going to win points based on the number of kids who give the same answer as you gave. The goal target number is 140 points. You're going to have 15 seconds to answer. Are you ready? Okay, here we go. Susie, name a kind of cheese. Flip. A jewel in a ring. Diamond. A language other than English. Spanish. Spanish. Very good. Strong answers. Now, let's see how you did, Susie. Remember, we need a combined total of 140 points. Let's see how Susie did. 
We asked her to name a kind of cheese. You said Swiss. That was the best possible answer, Susie. That was 59 points. A jewel in a ring. You said diamond. That was the best answer with 52 points. A language other than English. You said Spanish for a total of 33 points. That is 144 points. She has over and won the game already. That is terrific. You have won the prize. We don't even need to see the rest of the answer because you win. Congratulations, Reggie. Tell us what they've won. The winners. Our winners, the red team, will each receive this square one jacket and the sound machine. And for winning the lightning round, they'll each get the waterproof square one wristwatch. Our runners up, the blue team, will take home the square one wristwatch and sorts the note holder from another world. Are you proud of yourself, Susie? You should be, everybody. Let's take a bite or piece of the pie. That was a quick game. Thank you so much. She did it. First time. The story you are about to see is a fib, but it's short. The names are made up, but the problems are real. It was Friday, 9.47 a.m., and sophisticated New York theatergoers were abuzz with Joe Papp's production of Hamlet. It was staged in Times Square, and the entire cast was on roller skates. I was working the day watch out of MathNet. My partner is George Frankly. The captain is Joe Greco. My name is Monday. I'm a mathematician. We'd seen a number of weird things stolen in our careers as MathNetters. Maltese pigeons, despair diamonds, cars, TV rating points. But this robbery had us baffled. Someone was stealing... Parking meters. Parking meters? That's right. Parking meters. Someone was denuding NYC of its parking meters. Hard to believe, but upon investigation, we learned that each meter could hold anywhere from 9 to $40 in it, depending on the coinage. If someone could swipe enough of them, it could be worthwhile. Boy, New York City really collects a lot of money on parked cars. More than $34 million each year. We thought we found a couple of patterns in the chainsaw case, but they petered out. Petered out until... Same number again, Mr. Moose? Yes, Peter, 86. Through rigorous investigation, we learned that one man in New York City schedules the parking meter collection. Because the meters were all cut down in the prime of their lives, we figured someone had to know when these pump meters were going to be emptied so we could catch them at their fullest. We learned the only man outside the crack New York parking division who could know that schedule was a copier named Peter Pickwick. We put a stake out on Peter, and he led us to his cash. Why did you do it, Peter? Did you really make that much money from the change in the meters? Hey, 10 pounds of quarters here, 20 pounds of dimes there. Pretty soon you're talking big money. Almost $20,000. Peter Pickwick was locked up, and so we had solved yet another case. Or we thought we had. Hi, Captain. Don't tell us. You've got another case for us already. Not another case, Kate. The same case. What do you mean? A parking meter just got knocked over on 25th and Madison. Maybe you arrested the wrong guy. The wrong guy. We knew we had arrested the right man for the chainsaw maskers, and we suspected this might be the work of a copycat cutter. One look at the scene, and we knew that the premise was wrong. The meter hadn't been cut. It had been jimmied open. It's Monday, Mr. Frankly. We meet again. Good morning, Officer Cuffy. What's the story here? We found this meter just as you see it. Smashed open, money all over the ground. This young lady saw it happen. Mind if we ask you a few questions? Nope. I don't mind. What is your name? Liza Borden. Can you tell us what you saw, Liza? Uh-huh. I was across the street pretending to walk my dog pretending yes mom says i have a vivid imagination go on well a guy drove up of course i didn't think anything of it i mean you see guys drive up all the time sure then what happened the guy got out but again i didn't think anything of it well, sure, you see guys getting out all the time. Then what, Miss Borden? He took an axe and gave his meter 40 wax. Did you think anything of that? Well, I must admit my curiosity began to peak. Finally, the meter busted and he grabbed the coin. 
Did he put them in his pockets? Nope. He looked at them and threw them on the ground and drove off. Did you see what this man looked like? Sure. Can you describe him? Well, he was big and small. How could he be big and small? Well, he was bigger than me and smaller than you. Thank you, Liza. You've been a big help. I better go now before that mean old pterodactyl flies away with my dog again. Pterodactyl fool. Vivid imagination. Oh, would you like the license number? Liza gave us through DMV. They said it was a blue van registered to Ace Delivery Company in New Jersey. We called them and they told us they would check their delivery schedules. It would take some time. We decided to get back to George's robbery and paid a call on the numismatist who filed an earlier squeal, a report. We had a likeness of the driver put together by our police artist from Blondes Modoc's description. We showed it to Ernest Merchant. Yes, that looks like the man. Your report said he came in to do some business. Yes, he tried to sell me some coins. He said they were valuable. Did you buy them? No. Were they valuable? No, they were just ordinary quarters. He had them in a cheap pouch. Uh-huh. Had 20 of them. When I told him they were no good, he asked me to give him a $5 bill for them, and I did. And then he left the store, got into a blue van, and drove off. Your report said he put two magnetic logos... Oh, yes. He slapped a round sign on each door and then drove away. And the sign said major and minor appliance emergency service? Right. Mr. Merchant, what kind of a cheap pouch was it? A real cheap pouch. He left it. Here it is. G-E-F. George Ernest Frankly. It's yours. Uh-huh. Less the six dollars and fifty cents I left in it. He only cashed in five dollars. He must have splurged with the other buck and a half. Mm. Let's go. Another map of Manhattan, Kate? Uh-huh. Ace Delivery sent it over. This one divides the island up differently. Right, Pard? Uh-huh. That's a good thing about maps. They're adaptable. Kate? Yes, George? What the heck are you doing? George, this map shows where the ace delivery driver, a chap named Barney Old Neal, made his deliveries. Hmm. That's really interesting. You being facetious? Of course. We don't care where he delivered things. Now that we know his name, we just go find him and arrest him for busting Liza Borden's parking meter. That would be easy, wouldn't it, George? Piece of cake. Only one problem. And that is? Barney Oldmeal and the blue van have been missing for three days. Why do I keep getting your calls? What do you mean, Skipper? Two more parking meters have been ripped off. What is going on, you two? We'll check on it, Captain. Come on, George. Let's roll. <laughs> We checked out both locations and found essentially the same things. Two meters, both jimmied open and coins strewn on the street. There were no witnesses. It seemed like the more we knew, the less we knew. We decided to go back to headquarters when we got a call from Central. Okay, we're on our way. Better put the parking meters on hold. There's robbery on the east side, near the river. Chinese restaurant. The crook got away? Uh-huh. Chinese restaurant? I'll be back in an hour. Let's roll. Let's egg roll. Chinese restaurant. Let's egg roll. Get it? <laughs> okay, 
Mr. Monday, this is my partner, George. Frankly, Matt Ned. I am Sari. I phoned in the report. What happened, Sari? From the beginning? Yes, Sari. A man came in and handed me a note. A hold-up note? Not exactly. It said, this is not a hold-up. Keep your hands down. Take me to your meter. Your meter? Our cash registers are computerized, so I brought him here. Then what did he do? He went through my quarters. I beg your pardon? He told me to open the cash drawer, and I did. And he went through your quarters? That's right, Miss Monday. He examined the quarters as though he was looking for something. He took nothing? Nothing. He thanked me, said he was sorry to trouble me, left the restaurant and drove away. Drove away in what? A van. A blue van. We're very busy. Is there anything else? No, sirree. Okay. George. A blue van. The guy who busted the parking meter drove a blue van. The guy who went to the coin dealer drove a blue van. The guy who robbed your apartment drove, drove a, a blue, blue van. van. But the only time he stole anything was at my apartment. The parking meters in the restaurant, he was kind of window shopping, you know, looking without buying. What was he looking for, George? I don't know. Your valuable coins, George. But they weren't valuable, Kate. He knew that, remember? He took them to a coin dealer. He took 20 of them to the dealer. You said there were 26. There were. He's looking for one very specific coin, George. <gasps> of course. The two-headed Washington quarter. Which doesn't exist. You know that, and I know that. But he doesn't, doesn't know, know that. that. One Hundred Percent Square One TV is a production of the Children's Television Workshop. For a complete set of Square One TV teacher resources, send a check for nine dollars ninety-five cents to CTW School Services, Box SQTV, One Lincoln Plaza, New York, New York one zero zero two three. This program was made possible by grants from the National Science Foundation, the Corporation for Public Broadcasting, the U.S. Department of Education the Carnegie Corporation of New York, and by people who contribute to this station and other public television stations. This is PBS.